Worthy, Anita, you have the president talking about how horrific this crime is, and they touched a little bit on this now as we are about uh, nine hours after the first shots were fired, that you have the worst of humanity that the president just talked about and how terrible it is. And at the same time, in these hours, we have seen the best of humanity, which is the lines around the blood banks in El Paso, the hundreds of law enforcement officers who came to the scene. Some very clearly were on their day off when they arrived, strapped on a bulletproof vest and ran towards the sound of gunfire. And we bring back in uh, Steve Rogers, formerly of the FBI Joint Terror Task Force. Steve, we appreciate you staying with us uh, through all of this. Uh, the FBI in El Paso, they were now described themselves as a supporting agency. It depends sometimes on whether the Bureau actually takes over a crime scene or not. Uh, Governor Abbott seemed to think that the state would continue to take the lead on this investigation. Either way, the FBI in El Paso is saying that they are asking anyone that took video or pictures of the active shooter event to submit their digital media and then offers a place to upload it. How important is that in a case like this? You've got surveillance video, you've got forensics, and now in the past couple of years we have that so often when people hear gunfire, they pull out their phones and start recording rather than call 911. John or Leland, if you don't mind, I would just like to address something about the press conference and what you've been uh, repeating over and over again. Look, people need to hear from their leaders words of reassurance. And President Trump provided that in his first statement. He brought condolences and reassurance to the people of this country, and in particular, El Paso, that they're going to do everything they could to help the people in that area. And so did the governor, and so did other yeah. political leaders there. So, and that's important to say, because I've got to tell you, people are watching your broadcast, and it's important that they know uh, that uh, there are leaders out there. And I thank God right. that Fox is rolling these uh, 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 statements from people, po political people who care. Now, getting to your question, the video footage, the cell phones, anything people have need to bring to the uh, law enforcement authorities. And let me add this. It may not just be today that someone has a video, but maybe last week, a month ago, that this particular individual who has been charged with this horrendous uh, crime could have been on social media saying things, maybe posting videos. It's very right. important that if we, you know, we hear the cliche, you uh, see something, say something, now is the time. If anyone saw anything leading up to uh, what occurred today, at least if they think that it led up to this individual committing this act, they need to turn that over to the authorities. So often we hear in cases like this, as the investigation continues and as we learn more about the shooter, we learn more about the motive, we learn more about how he prepared for it and, as you pointed out, planned this so well, we see in interviews so many people who go, well, you know, there was something that just seemed off about him or he was training a little bit too hard with his weapons and it didn't really make sense what or why he was doing it, but I never said anything. And then after the fact, we hear things like this. It brings up an important point, though, that, that Greg Abbott talked about uh, in terms of memorializing before politics here. And it also brings up an important point of allowing the law enforcement officials who ran into this scene of carnage, and as the governor pointed out, that there are bodies that have not yet been recovered. There are still family members looking for their loved ones. There are men who wear the uniform and carry the badge who have seen the most horrific and awful parts of life today, they're going to need some time to process this and go through this after they have left tonight. Well, look, the governor's absolutely right. Uh, look, I wore that uniform and I wore that badge for 38 years. And the last thing on earth anyone wants to hear is uh, political talking points from individuals running for office. That's why I said it was very important uh, and it was very good that we heard from the president and the words that he spoke and the governor. And there was even a Democrat uh, on scene there who said we must come together. These are the words, the healing words, the words of reinsurance that our law enforcement officers, all first responders and in particular particularly the victims need to hear. So, so, you know, so, so my, so my colleague Kevin it. Cork often says that uh, at times the president is the commander in chief and often in the worst of times like today, he is the consoler in chief as America looks to the president for those reassuring words. We learned a little bit more detail, Steve, from the mayor. And just before I let you go, I want to talk about this. 1045 uh, was the first police officer on scene six minutes after first shots fired. 11.06, the suspect was apprehended. That tells you that in 
less than 30 minutes, he killed 20 people and injured more than 20 in this Walmart. You, that is something that we really haven't seen almost in America. Uh, true, but also uh, it's what we did see. We saw a well-trained police department prevent perhaps a lot more uh, people from being killed. This police department did an extraordinary job in yeah. getting to the scene uh, and of apprehending this individual alive. So I'll tell you what, it's a testament to the El Paso uh, Police Department. And I've got to tell you, uh, I'm confident that they're going to get to the bottom of this soon. All right, Steve, uh, as we let you go, we're going to show live pictures here of the suspect's house some 600 miles away in Allen, Texas. That is near the town of Dallas. Steve, we will have you back. And one can only imagine, Anita, the amount of investigative work that is going to go in now to tracing this suspect's steps from what happened in that house over the past few weeks, as Steve pointed out, that he was planning this attack, his trip to El Paso, and the culmination of the first shots being fired at 1039, Anita. Yeah, no question, Leland, they will be.